Hey, it's Alex from Android Central. Today we're taking a look at the camera features on the Samsung Galaxy S5. So first things first, this thing has a 16 megapixel camera with a 16 by nine sensor. Uh, you can also take four by three shots at 12 megapixels. So a lot of features we've got here. We're gonna select just a few to take a look at today. First is selective focus, uh, which lets you take a shot and then choose what you're focusing on after the fact. So we start off by taking a few exposures here and eventually we're gonna be able to choose uh, which of these things we're actually focusing on before saving the shot. Similar kind of feature to what we've seen on Sony and Nokia smartphones recently. So we can select near focus, uh, far focus, or this third pan focus option, which aims to keep everything in focus. And a bit difficult to see here on video, but it is choosing pretty well between the foreground and the background. And obviously it works best if you don't have a whole lot of movement in the background. You've still got a whole bunch of shooting modes, though some have been merged into the new shot and more feature. You've also got virtual tour, which is kind of a cross between Google Street View and uh, Photosphere. So you've got a bunch of Photospheres stitched together. And you can also download even more through Samsung apps, like you can see here. Regular surround mode lives down here and you can download it whenever you want. But really most of the camera features now live in this main menu off on the side here, including HDR. So uh, Samsung's making a big deal about the new HDR mode in this. It shows you a live HDR preview of whatever you're shooting. So we uh, scroll it to a bright light source down here. We're getting a very evenly uh, lit image. And HDR captures are really quick as well. We'll have to wait and see how image quality compares to phones with longer exposures like the Nexus 5. But at the very least, you're not gonna be sitting around looking at a progress bar when you take an HDR shot. Moving on to video, the Galaxy S5 can shoot at up to 4K resolution, just like the Note 3. Um, so a bunch of features will be disabled when you do it, but you can shoot uh, Ultra HD video on this phone. It takes a while to kick into action, um, but eventually you get a counter up at the top right corner showing you just how much space the video is using. And as you can see, it adds up pretty quickly when you're shooting in 4K. Um, so a few little stutters here. Remember, this is pre-production hardware and pre-production software, so hopefully that'll be ironed out. Most of the more advanced shooting modes from the Galaxy S4 and other Samsung phones now live under the shot and more feature. And what it does is takes a bunch of exposures and uh, then processes it and works out what the best mode to use for the particular shot is. So for this one, we've got best photo or eraser mode. A few of the others like drama shot and best face are grayed out because they don't apply to this particular shot. But the big deal here is that you don't have to scroll through lists of different shooting modes just to get the one that you want. There's just shot and more, you take a picture in that, and then you can take the time to look at which is gonna be the best shot for the photo you've taken. What's also pretty cool is it does save the original image as well, so you're not forced to make any permanent decisions when you're uh, applying modes to your photos. It also means you can drop out of the camera app and go to the gallery app at any time, and for any of the saved shot and more photos you've got, you've got the option to then go back in, choose a different mode, and then re-export, which is pretty cool. So the gallery app in the Galaxy S5 isn't just a way to view photos anymore, you've also got the new studio mode, which has got a bunch of different photo editing and video editing features built into it, which is gonna take a look at now. It's actually hidden a little bit out of the way behind this menu overflow. Select it and here are all your editing options. Uh, starting off with Photo Studio, which is basically a straight up photo editor. Seems to be based off some of the features in the Android 4.4 editor. So mostly the standard stuff we've come to expect. We've got some airbrushing options for portraits. Uh, we can add texts and borders to our images. Also control brightness, saturation and contrast and stuff like that. Got fairly simple touch controls, just like Snapseed. Drag left or right to control the option you're applying. Then when you're done, you can choose how you want to export it. Good quality or high quality, so five or eight megapixels. And then your image is saved to the special studio folder. Next up is Color Studio, which is pretty simple, but also kind of neat. You tap a bunch of images, select how many you want. Then you can turn them into this side-by-side -side collage sort of layout. Um, you can shuffle between a bunch of different styles and backgrounds. You can also completely change the layout. There are a few here you can choose from, and you can change the aspect ratio as well. The default is just a regular square, which of course would be perfect for Instagram shots or profile pictures. There's also a whole area in this gallery app dedicated to shot and more images. These are the pictures that you take in the camera app that you can choose which mode is applied to it after the fact. So first you select the shot and then you get the uh, effectively the same dialogue that you would get in the camera app. You can choose which effect you want to apply, so eraser mode. So that means if you take shot or more images, you can always go back and change things in the gallery app. Video Clip Studio is one of the more interesting features here. Uh, works a little bit like HTC's video highlights. Uh, first, you tag a bunch of images or videos, then it arranges it into a sort of Ken Burns style montage. There are a load of different filters you can apply, and you can even give it background music as well if you want to. Then finally, there's the Video Trimmer, which is more of a straight up video editor. Just select the clip you want, and then as before, you can uh, rotate and then drag in or out at the beginning or end to get rid of frames. All fairly simple stuff, but presumably there'll still be the Samsung video editor app that you can download from Samsung apps. 
So that's going to wrap up a look at gallery and photos on the Galaxy S5. A lot of new stuff going on in terms of imaging. I think the biggest new thing, aside from the improvement in image quality, is going to be the shot and more feature, which is going to make it much easier to use some of the GS5's more advanced photo features. Be sure to check out our full hands-on video with the Galaxy S5 for even more coverage. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.